everyone, and welcome to TCU's Higher Education Leadership Program webinar. Uh, we're here today to try and give you the perspective of a few different people that are either in or around the program um, so that you can get an idea of what the program might be able to do for you in your future. Uh, my name is Tim Jordan. I am a hall director here at TCU. Um, this is my third year at TCU, and I have loved every minute of it. I am Caitlin. I'm also a hall director here at TCU, and I am going into my second year. And so Caitlin and I will be your moderators today, which basically means this is almost the only time we're going to be speaking. Um, so we're going to try and kick it over to our experts that are also in the Hangout to speak to some of their experiences um, and try and make sure that we have smooth transitions between uh, our different topics. So uh, Caitlin's going to tell us a little bit about the uh, agenda. And then once she does that, we're going to have each of our folks introduce themselves. So we're going to talk through a couple of things with y'all today. We'll start with telling you about TCU and where we're located in Fort Worth, um, some of the highlights of our city and of our campus. And then we'll talk through a little bit of the professional opportunities that you would get if you chose to be part of our program um, and some of the different options that we offer within that. We'll also talk a little bit about the academic side of our program um, and have some of our current students speak to that a little bit, which we're excited to share with you. Um, and then we'll talk about the application process and what that looks like. And then we'll have just a little time to share anything that maybe we felt like we didn't hit during the, our time together. So uh, just to start us off, Stanley, could you introduce yourself? Hi there, my name is Stanley Thomas and I am the graduate assistant for Housing and Residence Life. I supervise the resident assistants uh, in Shirley and I advise the peer discipline board and I also help facilitate the educational sanction workshop that we have. Awesome. Brooke, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Brooke. I am a second year um, graduate Hall Director in the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. So on top of living with our students as a Hall Director, um, I oversee all of our IFC and Panhellenic Social Chairs um, and help with that. Since you're already in the frame, Zach, how about you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Zach Stra. I'm a first year graduate assistant here at TCU. I work as a split position, so half my time, I'm a Hall Director down for our Fraternity and Sorority Life. And then the other half of my time, I work in the Office of Student Activities, advising our Hall Career Association. Awesome. Now on to some of our professional staff. Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Sepulveda. I serve as a Hall Director here um, on campus. I am in my fifth year as a Hall Director um, and also have an opportunity to supervise one of our graduate assistants um, in the Housing Office. It's our multicultural um, graduate enrichment graduate assistant within housing. Um, and I've loved every minute since I've been here. Great. And last but certainly not least, the um, chair of the program and the department, uh, Don Mills. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted that you are interested in, in TCU. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself and how I ended up being in the head of the program. I served in student affairs as a practitioner for over 40 years, the last approximately 20 of them as a senior vice chancellor uh, position, um, and then moved over into faculty where I think it's really important that we tie the academics with the practicality. So at TCU, if you are in our higher ed leadership program, we take seriously the part about helping you to become a leader, but we know that only happens with experience. So as we want to be sure that you have an opportunity uh, both for a graduate assistantship and also as an internship uh, in addition as part of our academic program. Awesome. All right. So our first topic uh, for the day is going to be to talk a little bit about TCU as a community and also the community that surrounds us, which is the city of Fort Worth. And so uh, to talk a little bit about our community and culture, we're going to kick it back over to Zach. Absolutely. So here at TCU in Fort Worth, um, there's definitely an overarching sense of relationship building and wanting to build that community 
what you'll see here through the students is while a lot of our students do come from Texas, there are an overwhelming amount of students who come from out of state. And so being able to work with students from different backgrounds, um, it's really been a, a pretty eye-opening experience as a graduate assistant, having the opportunity to work with such a, a wide range of students and then being able to be supported as by the professional staff and having that support to help build those communities and really work together. And so when you're in this area, uh, Fort Worth, I think, was recently named like the nicest town in, in Texas or one of them. And so that really translates not only in the overarching community of Fort Worth, but here at TC as well. When you're walking down the campus and you see students walking in groups, and they're laughing, or if you're seeing someone walking solo, they'll look up, they'll like smile back, give you the head nod. And so when you're here, you're very relationship based and focused. Speaking of relationship focus, Brooke, can you tell us a little bit about the emphasis within our student affairs department on the student experience and some of those relationships? Yeah, absolutely. So I think you'll see among um, most of our, our student affairs departments that we always put our student first. Um, if we're in the middle of doing something and a student walks in, um, that's going to be our priority always. And so um, really just figuring out how we can prioritize our students to make sure they have the best experience and that they can get the most leadership development out of anything and everything that we do um, and bringing that back um, to making sure that they, they have a good experience and, and we can help them develop. Great, thank you. And to talk a little bit more about um, the student experience from a faculty point of view, as well as someone who's been uh, seeing TCU as it's evolved over the past decades, uh, Dr. Mills, can you speak a little bit to the student point of view from your standpoint? Sure, I, I think the uh, student experience is a little bit reflective in my own experience. I came to TCU uh, well over 40 years ago uh, with the intention of working for two or three years and then going somewhere else. Uh, but instead what happened was I, I uh, made a lot of friends, had a lot of opportunities, and as a professional, I was able to grow in many different ways. And so I've, I've stayed at TCU and I've never re regretted that. But what that means for a student is that you will be able to make connections not just with other students. You'll make connections with faculty. You'll make connections uh, with colleagues that will benefit you while you're a student at TCU and well beyond into your professional career. Uh, at, at TCU, we've been very fortunate to build a campus that is designed to create interaction. Uh, you can hardly go across our campus without feeling engaged in some way, whether it's with a group of students, whether it's with faculty and staff. Uh, we try very hard to make sure that there are opportunities for people to eat together, uh, to laugh together, uh, and it really is a, a community place. Uh, it's what enabled me to stay in, in uh, at TCU for all these years and be happy. Uh, these hall directors told you they're happy every day. I can't say I've been happy every day, but I've been happy almost every day. Uh, and I think uh, it's it's a, an extraordinary place. And I think you would find uh, you'd be happy here too. Thank you, Dr. Mills. So I think one of those opportunities for students to gather together and have these really fun life experiences are in our athletic program. So Stanley, can you talk to us for just a second about us being a like smaller in size school, but having a big time athletic program and what that experience is like? Yeah, so um, I come from a background and my, during my undergrad, I did uh, track. And so uh, coming to this university, it was really cool, really awesome to see so many of the athletes that we get to see on TV um, walking around campus and being able to talk with them and interact with them. Specifically, the building that I work in, in Carter, um, there's a couple of people that uh, play football that are on the offensive line, they start. And being able to have just an open conversation of saying, hey, how was your day? Um, how's class? How, like, how's life? And them not just walking away from me, being able to interact with them is really cool because hopefully they get to play in the NFL, they have a huge shot, but like, 
they're not stuck up and it's really cool um, to interact with them. They interact with other residents um, and that doesn't just go for the football team. It goes from me being able to talk with the uh, track head coach for a little bit when he was moving into of his athletes into Shirley, uh, being able to talk to the point guard, Jalen Fisher, um, just seeing him walk around campus. Um, and so it, it just, this school isn't necessarily where it's like everyone is just, someone's going to be too stuck up to talk to you. Um, and so that's been really nice um, coming from my athletic perspective, but also coming from a student perspective, being able to just talk to anyone, um, any of the athletes or anybody from the athletic department. Um, and I know we'll probably talk a little bit about game days and all that stuff later. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, so th there's quite a few kind of highlights and flagship um, programs, initiatives uh, at TCU, athletics being one of them, but there are so many things beyond um, athletics at TCU that we'd like to kind of share um, over the next five or 10 minutes. So uh, speaking specifically to fraternity and sorority life, um, Brooke can kind of give us that experience and why that's special at TCU. Yeah, absolutely. So um, fraternity and sorority life at TCU is a pretty large population, just over 50%, 51% of our students are affiliated um, with a Greek organization. We have five councils. Um, we have IFC, Panhellenic, MGC, MPHC, and IGC. Um, our IGC houses our faith base and band organizations. Um, we, we, we definitely love that we have a large Greek community, um, but we also like to say that you don't have to be affiliated with an organization to be happy and successful at TCO. Um, so, so we kind of like to balance that. We do, we just finished or we're finishing um, a very large Greek housing project in May. Um, so you'll be able to see those. They're beautiful new houses that um, have been restored or change from our, our older um, Greek housing. So we're really excited about those and so are our students. Um, so it's just a really good space for them to come together and have their exact meetings and um, live together in community. Awesome. Um, so something else that contributes to the environment that we've created here at TCU are the collaborations that we are able to do across departments um, within student affairs, but even outside of student affairs. So Zach, who is one of our grads who splits his time between departments, could you talk to us for just a second about what that experience has been like for you um, and just the openness in general at TCU to collaborate? Absolutely. So one of my favorite things at TCU has been, I feel like a lot of institutions or partners, they, they talk about how um, the campus is relationship based, but coming to TCU, it really stuck out as an institution where they not only talk the talk, but they walk the walk. And so for us, that played out day one in our trainings where we didn't stick with just fraternity story life or student activities, but we had almost every office on campus come in, teach us what they do and talk about, hey, here's how we can directly benefit your, your role and how we can collaborate and create the most out of that. And so for me, that was something that was really kind of lit a fire for me and made me really more passionate to take a hold of a different project. And so I don't feel pigeonholed at TC, which is really nice because at the end of the day, I'm here for two years as a grad assistant and I wanna make the most out of that with all the experience I can get. And so being able to be in a split position, I work between two offices and coming into it, I was really concerned is how's this actually gonna play out? But when I got here and I worked with my two different supervisors, it could have played out more perfectly because the offices here are on such the same page when it comes to their graduate assistants that if I'm needed extra time for sorority recruitment, then student activities knows like that's totally fine. Or in the fall when I need it for the fall concert, uh, fraternity sorority life knows like, hey, that's where his time needs to be spent. And so TCU's done a really good job at making everything such a collaborative effort and making sure that the GAs really get the best experience from that and catering to it. Thank you, Zach. Uh, one of the biggest uh, flagship collaborations that we have on our campus is called Frog Camp. And we're gonna have Dr. Mills talk a little bit about that. Frog Camp is uh, really a fun activity for everybody involved. The, the faculty who, who participate, the staff, and of course the students who go. Uh, 
you can probably tell by its name that Frog Camp is an opportunity for students to go off campus uh, and interact, but it's not just a chance for students to get to know each other. It's a chance for students to understand what does it mean to have a college education? How does one go about the business of becoming educated? Uh, and it, it's an education not just in how do I navigate the classroom, but how do I navigate student groups? How do I navigate uh, difficult problems? Uh, Frog Camp really is a preparation for college. What's cool about it here is that the leadership of Frog Camp are undergraduate students, uh, obviously under the, the guidance of uh, staff, frequently uh, young staff, uh, GAs are involved, uh, some of the most senior professors at TCU go to camp with the students. And so it's three or four days of people getting to know one another, learning what's going to make them successful. And uh, in truth, for many people, Frog Camp is what sets them on uh, the path towards success. Now, uniquely at TCU, we don't all go to the same place. Uh, we have uh, camps for people of different interests. And so that's true as well for you as a, as a graduate assistant, um, you would have uh, the opportunity to attend uh, various camps uh, as well. So I think you would find that Frog Camp um, is something that takes advantage of the fact that we care about the relationships between various people at TCU and it cements a personal relationship between faculty, staff, and students. It's a wonderful program. In addition to Frog Camp, uh, another piece of collaboration that you'll see frequently on our campus is our efforts for diversity and inclusion. Apologies for the lights, mine are on a timer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, uh, but another big collaboration, I'll kick it over to someone who has a background light. Uh, Ben's <laughs> gonna talk about some of our efforts for diversity and inclusion across campus between departments and things that you can get involved in as a GA. Yeah. So one of the things that we actually just got done doing last week was um, tunnel of oppression. And so the housing and residence life office kind of takes this on, but it's a really big collaboration with all of student affairs and uh, um, faculty and staff across campus to really make this project run. Um, so tunnel of oppression, if you're not familiar with it, is a opportunity where you simulate um, different rooms and students get to go through these rooms and experience a different type of oppression in each room. And so um, how we run it here at TCU is each room is sponsored by a student group or organization or this year we had one student who was just very passionate about a certain topical area and so they were able to um, put a room on on that topical area for the just them. So this is um, our CRESS, which is um, our one of our new programs for um, cultural um, and ethnic studies and on the academic side. And then it's anyone from our housing office to multicultural office to Center for Student Development, um, career services. I mean, everyone really plays a hand at making this project really run. And um, so that is one of the opportunities that we have. Um, we also have um, what we call human library, which is something that we're really excited about and talk about collaboration um, to make it run. And it is something that we uh, ask faculty, staff and students to um, essentially share a story about themselves and students, faculty, and staff members get to check out that story. Um, so they spend 20 minutes with the individual one-on-one -on -one sharing that story or that topical area um, and getting to get a little bit more of a, a piece of them of who they really are. So promoting um, storytelling, promoting um, there's more to a person than just what you see, um, more to a person that's just behind. Um, you can't judge a book by its cover kind of thing. And in order to make that run, I mean, it is all across campus um, to make sure that we assure, ensure um, quality stories from all people, um, but all walks of life as well. We want the diversity of our campus to really shine there. So that takes um, different departments coming in and promoting this for us, um, but also being a part of the experience as well. So um, students, faculty, staff, grads, um, even people from our Bright Divinity School come over to the side of campus and, and participate in that. So that's some two major events that we do that takes a lot of collaboration um, to promote diversity and inclusion across our campus. 
One of the most sort of fun and unexpected collaborations we had this year was College Game Day. Um, and so we all kind of pitched in in a different way, but uh, we'll have two of our folks kind of share how they pitched in and got to experience the game day, um, College Game Day football show at TCU. Brooke? Yeah. Okay. College Game Day was a lot of fun. Um, I when I got there, it was just absolutely wild. Probably one of the coolest things that I've done, like being a graduate assistant, being in higher education in general. Um, so essentially we all signed up for shifts and I think there was like a 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. shift. And um, I think I got like 5 a.m. Um, to, to 8 a.m. or something, but um, we all helped like kind of keep the students in line. And um, the way that they did game day was like the first group of students got like right in the front. And so there was students camping out all night. And so we wanted to make sure that they were taken care of. So we provided um, dinner for them and snacks and then um, donuts in the morning. So um, just being there so that they had this great experience. And then we all stood around. We'll watched while it happened and we got to experience it too. So um, I was so thankful that, that we got chose and we're given the privilege to show off our campus and um, have ESPN around and hanging out with us. Definitely. Stanley, tell us a little bit about your college game day experience. Yeah, so for starters, uh, everyone that's watching this, if you ever have a chance to go to a game day, I definitely recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. They're probably not as going to be as like, great as how TCU hosted it, but <laughs> I was gonna say that um, it was just awesome to be able to work with different departments. And what I mean by that is we got to work with FSL. We got to work with, uh, you know, Title IX people. We got to reach out to people that um, all of different parts of the faculty at TCU, like all the departments, all got to sign up for these different shifts and got to come out and just help out. Um, and it was really cool to work with TCU PD. It was really cool to see Fort Worth uh, the Fort Worth Police Department out there. Um, and it was just incredible. Uh, one of the most memorable moments that I had of that uh, was when uh, Brooke had mentioned when we were going to give donuts and give it to all of our students. And so, um, but before we were going to give our donuts to the student, we were waiting for the chancellor, the, you know, the chancellor of the university to come out. And it was just remarkable how a student would come up and say, hey, can we get some of these donuts yet? And I was like, oh, no, we can't, we're waiting for the chancellor. And right when I said that, their eyes just lit up like, oh, the chancellor's coming. And would just immediately just be like, okay, yeah, we'll wait for them. Or we'll wait for him, we'll wait for him. And so um, it just, it shows, like it speaks volume that um, if the chancellor of the university generally cares about coming out to game day and wanting to be there to pass out donuts to all the students, um, it's the same across for all the faculty and all the different departments um, here at TCU. And that is, one of the most memorable memorable moments that I've had uh, at my time here at TCU. So Zach started us, us off talking about collaboration sort of from a broad perspective and how he's gotten to partake in so many different things since he came to TCU. But the one collaboration that's near and dear to his heart is our collaboration with something called Hall Crew, which he can tell us about now. Yes, thank you. So like Tim said, Hall Crew is kind of like one of my many loves and passions here at TCU. And so Hall Crew is an organization where every residence hall on campus, there's 12 uh, that participate, uh, they each have a Hall Crew. And so that is, it provides students who really have the, the desire to build community within their halls to take that leadership and help plan events and bring people together. And so that's outside of the resident assistant role that traditionally programs so they're helping aid in that, in that additional um, area. And so what happens is all these hall crews meet weekly and they'll work with their hall directors, which are their, like the professional staff on campus. And then they'll also meet with their individual hall crews in their buildings. And so through these programs, they're collaborating with other organizations on campus sometimes to bring in things such as um, alcohol and drug education and doing like, the beer goggle events to teach about here's alcohol safety and here's how we maneuver those conversations down to things such as like an ice cream Sunday bar and a Super Bowl watch party. And so really it's awesome to see that at TCU, you don't necessarily have to have a leadership role or a title attached to your name to be a student who makes an impact and to create a community and a relationship building opportunity for everyone. And so for me, Hall Crew gives our students 
especially those who are kind of in the phase of, I want to do something, but I'm not sure that I'm ready for that big of a, a role or that big of a title, or am I too, too young to take on this task? It really gives them that really good experience to say, no, like you can do this. It's going to be great. You're really supported. And you have this collaboration with all these offices across campus, including your hall director and the three student directors who work through hall crew, as well as myself and the other professional staff who help run and support the organization. So it's a really cool experience for our students. And for me as a GA, really to have the opportunity to work closely with these students and see that they're successful in their plans and their goals here at TCU. Thank you, Zach. I love the way that you said that. You know, you don't have to have a title here attached to you to be able to be in a leadership position. Um, I think that's very true to TCU and who we are. Um, so we're also going to talk about a few more things that are very true to TCU and who we are, some of our traditions. So we'll briefly run through what some of those look like. But Jen, if I could ask you to talk a little bit about our tree lighting ceremony, everyone's probably favorite tradition. Yeah, I definitely think if you ask um, anyone on campus, probably about 95% of everybody will say uh, TCU tree lighting is their favorite tradition. Um, we bring over people from the Fort Worth community. We're very attached to the Fort Worth community. Um, so TCU is not in an island of its own whatsoever, but um, have a lot of alumni and horned frogs that live in the community or just people in general who love the TCU community who come to our campus for uh, TCU tree lighting um, and its event. Um, a TCU event is not complete without any fireworks and like just going all out. So envision what's so big about the tree lighting up. Oh no, it is way more than that. We have hot chocolate and cookies. Um, there's usually like a movie or something for the younger kids. There's photo booths, often reindeer or um, a longhorn steer, the Texas way if we can't get a reindeer in on that time. Um, but just the time to really collaborate and to um, be with other horn frogs together at a time that we're celebrating joy um, the Christmas cheer or the holiday cheer is all around us during that time and so it's just a time to get together with other horn frogs um, and more than 7,000 people come out to our TCU Commons um, and just have this wonderful time with um, to gather and just to celebrate and to be in one place um, if you haven't seen TCU um, around the holiday time, I highly encourage you to Google pictures because this place is magical um, as it is, but magical around the holiday time with just all the lights that are up, everything's purple and white, um, just a lot of pride going through, but it's just a lot of time um, that creates this wonderful environment to be with other herd and frogs and to really feel like you really belong at a place um, during a time where sometimes you're away from family and things like that and the people you love, but just another home away from home to feel secure with this wonderful event that we have um, to, with other people around us that we really do love, so. Yes, friend. Um, so another tradition at TCU is our fall concert. So Zach, we're gonna throw it back to you to talk a little bit about what that looks like from your perspective. Yes, so student activities in the fall um, is a fun place to be because there's so much going on. And one of the favorite things of the semester every fall is the fall concert. And so the fall concert is the largest concert that we hold in the semester. Throughout the entire semester, we'll have smaller artists come in and perform almost on a weekly basis. And so we had artists from Ben Rector to Luke Pell, um, but our fall concert is really reserved for those artists that are like big time. Um, you'll see all the students flock out to the commons for it. It's full, you'll see students kind of chilling from their rooms on their in the residence halls and with that, the artists are picked through the Student Government Association with guidance from our office. And so um, the last three artists who came by this year, it was X Ambassadors. Last year was Mike Posner. And the year before that was Hunter Hayes. And so through that, TCU really does a great job of providing our students these opportunities to just get out and do something fun without the pressure of, you know, drinking or anything like that. And so with that, you really see our students turn out and show up to these events. And so as a student activities GA, it's been really awesome working on the back side of it, dealing with the artists themselves, working with the logistics and planning of the concerts, and just, you know, the perk of getting to meet the band <laughs> before the show. Like that's a really cool piece of being a GA at TCU and being able to work in these kind of environments where the professional staff here gives you those responsibilities and those tasks and they trust you with it. And so with me, like, 
the fall concert is one of my favorite events. So. Sweet. And uh, since we're on the screen, Brooke, could you tell us a little bit about the tradition of Parents Weekend at TCU? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Parents Weekend here at TCU is no joke. Um, during my undergrad, I think we had a Parents Weekend, but I don't think you would ever have known, really. Um, but at TCU, everyone's parents show up. Um, so Student Activities also puts this program on for an entire weekend, um, and kids get to hang out with their parents, and there's different events set up. Usually um, the there's a football game that weekend, um, and that's a very common thing to go um, with your parents' football weekend, and oftentimes our students' parents are like huge Horn Frog fans. Um, they really like embrace the the community and the the sport life of, of TCU, which is really cool. Um, so it was just fun to see our residents come together and, and enjoy time with their parents and um, have the weekend to to celebrate family. Yeah, fall fall really becomes kind of a nonstop celebration, whether it's game day or family weekend or homecoming. It really just kind of all stacks onto each other. So it's a great time. Um, one of the things that we really are excited to share with you is TCU's latest um, kind of leadership campaign and direction for the university. Um, it's called our Lead On campaign, and uh, Jen has been working kind of with them and uh, is going to be able to speak to it a lot better than I can, so I'm going to kick it right over to her. Yeah, so Lead On is TCU's new campaign. Um, again, really close with the Fort Worth community, so drive around this city, you're going to see flyers, um, um, billboards everywhere, it's just say like, uh, take the lead on, um, go TCU type of thing. And really what that means is just that um, we are really passionate about creating um, students to reach their full potential um, in a global world and what that means, not just within the community of TCU or within the Fort Worth community, but what that means around the world. Um, so our students are such bright, brilliant students, not to mention our faculty staff here are just amazing in supporting them in that. And so um, our lead on campaign is basically, as you've heard throughout this whole thing of us building relationships and um, it's students really taking the lead lead on their passion and their goals. And so the research that you're, they're doing within the community, um, the research that they're doing globally, um, what changes are they making globally? Um, what are we taking the lead on um, in this world and how we are making it a better place um, from the Horn Frog way. And so a lot of the lead on campaign, um, if you take a look at our website for the lead on campaign, um, you'll notice there's not too many words on there. There's just a lot of testimonies and stories and videos of individuals who are taking the lead on um, in their field or in their area of study or practice. Um, and so I highly encourage that. But I think that also is a testament of like, who we are, our brand and our lead on campaign that we're doing is not just words, but it's people who share that, um, which goes into people fostering relationships and really just pursuing that. Um, there's an article on there if you get a chance, but it's the article name, I pulled it up so I don't butcher it, but our brand personality, what TCU has in common with Mother Teresa, Carrie Underwood, Underwood and Walt Disney. So if you haven't um, checked that out, I highly encourage you to check it out because it's really funny how they're able to map that all together and how we're taking the lead on things. So um, really just building relationships. And so the idea behind it is um, take a lead on your future, take a lead on your experience and take a lead on what you get to pursue in this world. And how do we as TCU help you push you to the max capacity and your potential um, to make a difference within this community and the global world that we live in. So it's really cool. Highly suggest taking a look at some of those things um, you might tear up like me. Dr. Mills, can you take a second and tell us what this lead on campaign has meant to student affairs and what it means for their graduate student experience? Sure. I, th I think Jen was right when she was talking about lead on means that we want our graduates to be able to be truly leaders, to advance their organization beyond where they are when they join. Um, student Affairs at TCU is looking very hard to find ways that we can work with undergraduate students so that they get experience as leaders and are ready to contribute when they graduate. Uh, we're not interested in just graduating people who know a lot, but also people who know how to do a lot. Um, I, and I think student affairs for a long time has 
said, we want to teach people how to make a life, not just how to make a living. And that's really what the Lead On campaign is about. So what does that mean if you're a, a graduate student or a graduate assistant? Uh, first of all, as a student, we want to provide you with the same kind of support and the same kind of opportunity that we do to undergraduates, although on a more sophisticated level. Uh, it also means, though, that we're going to give you opportunities to be to create those relationships with undergraduate students, uh, to be able to see how someone grows and how, as a professional in higher education, a professional in, in student affairs, your leadership becomes critical to uh, helping others develop their passion, to understand themselves so that they can uh, put their leadership and their skills into play. So it, it all works uh, together. And, and I'm happy that the Student Affairs Division at TCU and the graduate program in, in higher education leadership are very closely linked. I think we all want the same kind of things to happen. And so this lead on uh, campaign uh, is one where we together are trying to make sure that you as a graduate student you as a professional uh, are indeed a leader in the school community and in the local community. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, one thing about the TCU Lead On campaign is it's going to mean uh, some growth for the school and some growth in different programs uh, within TCU. So just to cap us off, Jen, from a big picture perspective, what, what are some things that uh, Lead On is hoping to kind of enact as far as change goes at TCU? Yeah, so one of the things with this Lead On campaign that we're hoping to enact is um, growth for our undergraduate population, but for our graduate population as well. So as a university, we're looking to grow. Um, and one of the areas in particular that we're looking to grow at is going to be our diverse populations and um, people from different backgrounds. Um, I think that goes back into what we've been saying before of like creating citizens for a global community. Um, and so making sure that we are able to provide that to our students who are here as well um, as students who we have abroad, but, but students here making sure we're giving a different perspective and what that um, their education looks like from different backgrounds. So that way we're providing a more well-rounded um, education in the classroom for them too, which is something that we're really looking forward to, really excited. Um, but this goes beyond, um, I think just our either admissions office or goes beyond just the College of Education. Um, this is a university um, push that we're trying to do. So every person on our campus has a role and plays a part in this as well. Um, and so it's really exciting to see, for example, this morning our housing and fraternity sorority life um, met with um, the admissions office of what they're doing on their part to help with the um, diversity and what they're doing to help grow with this university. And I think that goes back to every department's strategic plan of what we're doing to help this uh, this grow as well and to help serve our students as we change our population a little bit what we're doing to serve them and so i think for student incoming people um who are coming into this program and going into the field of student affairs like this is prime time for us this is awesome this is like such rich knowledge you're learning how a culture is changing you're learning how to grow a certain population um and this is an experience that not a lot of people get to be a part of and so to be a pioneer in that with us um but to be on the front lines of two of what this change looks like of what growth looks like um how does that affect every department in our office and how we serve our students is just it's a ripple effect it's not just one thing of the university big but it goes down to the small stuff as well. Um, so getting to be a part of that and getting that experience underneath your belt and exposure of that is just so beneficial and enriching for your education um, and what you can do wherever you choose to go after here. Because as Dr. Mill said, um, we're looking to engage you afterwards and what those experience will look like once you leave this university. Um, you're here for two years and then we want you to go forth and do great things. Um, and so what does that look like for us and how do we help you with those experiences? So lots of opportunity and growth for um, our incoming graduate assistants who get to see and experience this with us. 
So that was a ton of knowledge about lead on for TCU. Um, so I'll go back to what Jen said, check out our website. If you have more questions, also reach out to us. We'll share information at the end um, so that you can ask some questions if you have them. But, but we'll also briefly talk a little bit about the Fort Worth community so that you're familiar with just the city that we're located in and kind of the happenings in our fun little city. Actually, it's not little. It's the 16th largest city in the country, larger than Boston, Seattle, and Denver. So Stanley, if you could talk for just a second about some of the social opportunities in Fort Worth. So uh, there's two things that I'm really passionate about. The first is being able to talk to people and building relationships with other people, um, especially within like the social cohort at TCU. Um, and the second is food. And so like, <laughs> I love trying to figure out the best spot to eat, the best spot, like as in the best tacos, the best steak, who has the best barbecue, um, and who just like has good fried chicken. And so like with all of that being said, Fort Worth gives me so many opportunities to try out a new spot like every single week more like, and like every single day if I wanted to. Um, it gives me an opportunity to go out and meet other people too. Like there's so many good spots that has great happy hours. There's times where our cohort after um, a professional development day, we are going to go to a specific spot, um, whether that is uh, Meso Maya, which is a really good Mexican restaurant or HG Supply Company, like wherever it could be. Um, we would go to all these different spots. And so uh, Fort Worth has a lot of opportunities to meet other people um, and to be social. And uh, the best way that I think that I know I can be social is going to a restaurant and eating their food. Stanley, I love you for that. But I have to ask you really quick, what do you think is the best barbecue in Fort Worth? It's got to be Heim Barbecue. And what I mean by that is they have the best bacon burnt ends. And I promise if you come to Fort Worth um, or when you come to Fort Worth, you will need to go to Heim Barbecue. And <laughs> yes, Ren. Yes. Correct answer. Good job. <laughs> So another thing I wanted to share with everyone was uh, just the opportunity to engage with the community and uh, provide some community service to others. Um, I know that for a lot of people, giving back is why we get into this profession. And so there's opportunity not just to give back within TCU, but also to the greater Fort Worth community. Um, some of the biggest highlights there are the Tarrant County Area Food Bank. Um, is a place that we go every summer as part of our training. Um, some people will go and participate in Meals on Wheels programs from them. And in general, it's just a great resource to go and try and help the community out. Um, if you have a, a couple extra hours in your week, um, just going and helping sorting the food that they receive or trying to distribute it. Um, there's quite a few folks at TCU that are pretty heavily connected to the Tarrant County uh, Food Bank. Another piece is that Fort Worth's home to quite a few different hospitals. And so there comes a lot of different service opportunities as a result of that. Um, my, an organization that I advise, uh, National Residence Hall Honorary, um, works really closely with a lot of the children's hospitals in the area, um, making blankets, uh, writing cards, visiting them, um, and just trying to give back to the community in some way. Our fraternity and sorority life, so we mentioned how it has a big footprint on our campus. So one of the biggest benefits of having so many folks involved in fraternity and sorority life is their philanthropies are amazing. Um, one of the biggest philanthropies this past year was our Movember project um, in support of men's health. And that is something that's raised thousands of dollars. They've created a 5K that just ran its second annual um, across campus. And it's really just created a strong culture that's supporting men's health and the greater uh, Fort Worth community. Um, and then from a health perspective, which um, we all appreciate, there's the Blue Zones project in TCU, or I should say Fort Worth is a Blue Zone city. Um, and so there's a lot of ways to engage in the community in trying to support um, physical health, mental health, all types of different um, you know, aspects of well-being for the Fort Worth community. And so if you're interested in community service, there's quite a bit to like uh, in the area of Fort Worth. Yeah, so we'll have Zach really quickly um, just give us like a rundown of the highlights for Fort Worth to wrap us up on what it's like to live in Fort Worth. Thanks. So 
like KP said, Fort Worth is like the 16th largest city in the country. Um, and it's like the third, like top five largest in Texas. And so with that, it comes a lot of opportunity. And like my man Stanley said, food's like number one. Um, so really great opportunities for some barbecue, but also like the other things you guys can do here. And so what I liked most about Fort Worth as the overall city is that everything seems really accessible. And so I can get in my car and traffic isn't going to be super terrible and I can get to downtown to see a nice movie, um, go out to a really nice restaurant. They have a lot of museums. And so um, one of the, mu the Museum of Modern Art plays independent films. And so if that's your jam, like it's mine, like it's a really good opportunity for you. Um, and they also have really pretty trees like year round to like <laughs> hang out with. Um, there is the Trinity River. And so the city right now is currently working on a project to add more kind of accessibility points. But through the end of that project, there'll be, there will be 88 miles worth of waterfront kind of access. And so you have a lot of biking opportunities, running, walking, jogging, rollerblading, if you're into that. Um, and so just overall, and the, the zoo, the zoo is like <laughs> top three in the nation. And I can attest they have a really good zoo here and they're opening up a brand new African kind of safari land area um, or renovating it. And so it's nice because TC is a great place to be, obviously. But as a GA, sometimes it's really nice to just kind of step away real quick and refresh. And I think TCU, or sorry, Fort Worth really offers that opportunity for you to go 10 minutes away and just immerse yourself into something completely different and really fun and awesome. Um, and so like two day, yesterday, the rodeo was in town and still is in town. And yeah. so it was fun to take a little two hour day trip to see some good old fashioned cowboy rodeo. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Zach. So we're going to get into uh, professional opportunities for you as a graduate student. We've talked a lot about TCU as an institution, uh, the Fort Worth community, but diving a little bit deeper into the types of specific professional development opportunities you're going to be afforded as a graduate student at TCU. Um, and so what better person to start us off with kind of an overview of all the different offerings within assistantships than Dr. Mills. Thank you. Uh, as I said earlier, we want people not just to know, but also to be able to do. And that's what the graduate assistantships are designed for. So this is not uh, a a job like a student, uh, undergraduate student job. This is your first professional job. Uh, and so you will have professional responsibilities. We have a wide range of graduate assistantships uh, from uh, working in housing, working with fraternities and sororities, student activities in the career center. Uh, we have uh, wellness, well being, uh, graduate assistantships. I'm meeting in two weeks to actually establish a graduate assistantship program at uh, Texas Wesleyan University. Uh, so we, we try to provide a variety of, of opportunities. Uh, for those of you who are coming here as doctoral students, we have graduate assistantships that are designed for doctoral students in the chancellor's office and the provost's office. Um, and in um, the assessment and accreditation office. So um, in addition to student affairs, an opportunity to see the broad range of what a university does and how a university operates and where as a higher education leader you might best fit in. Uh, all of our assistantships pay um, 18 hours of tuition, which at TCU is an expensive uh, proposition. And we also uh, pay a, a stipend, a uh, small living stipend um, to go along with the tuition. Could you uh, talk to us a little bit about how likely someone is if they are to get into the program and decide to come to TCU that they are able to, to find an assistantship? Um, we don't guarantee that everybody will have an assistantship, but everybody who's been admitted to the program in the last five years has gotten an assistantship. So um, the person would be very likely uh, to get an assistantship. Great. 
So really quickly, Zach, you have a different type of graduate assistantship than maybe a traditional um, assistantship on our campus. So can you talk a little bit about the split position um, and what that ha experience has been like for you? Absolutely. So like I kind of mentioned earlier, coming to TCU, one of my big concerns was a split position. Um, for me, I was concerned of how do I handle two supervisors and that time commitment? And so really being assured by both my supervisors that, hey, like we're on the same page here, we know what we need of you, and we're gonna be flexible of your hours was really beneficial to me. And so what my assistantship looks like is there are times where one office is more project heavy than the other. And so I, just, I split my time accordingly to that. And each supervisor knows. And the great thing about having a split position that I really found is that when you are in such a heavy project or there's just a lot going on and you just kind of need that mental break, it's been really refreshing and really nice to just kind of switch hats real quick and go to the other assistantship and work on a few of those things before switching back over. Um, so it's been really beneficial. And in my split position, I'm working with housing, I'm working with Greek life, and I'm also working with student activities. And so I don't think that there is a better opportunity for me anywhere in my grad search to give me all those functional areas, in addition to the offices that I get to collaborate with already through those functional areas. And so for me, it's at times, like I really, well not at times, like all the time, I really enjoy it. And it's providing an opportunity that I would have gotten had I gone to a GA position where it's only one. And I can speak on behalf of the other G GAs who are in split positions and how they really enjoy it as well because i think that's where you really get to the the nitty-gritty of the relationship aspect of tcu to where we are in all these different offices and so there's just natural collaboration that happens through that and so for me i think being able to have that opportunity is one of the best ones you can get when you're in grad school yeah, and the split positions are something that we've really kind of started in the last few years, um, and we've seen some good results from it. So there's a lot of opportunity to have assistantships in a variety of areas, um, and we are only increasing the amount of assistantships that we're offering as Dr. Mills uh, is kind of working the phones and getting people, uh, getting different offices on board to bring on graduate students um, in collaboration with our Lead On campaign and some other things. Um, now, if you have a certain assistantship, but if you want additional experience, there are quite a few different internship options that you'll have over the course of your time within graduate school. Dr. Mills, could you tell us a little bit more about the internship process and what some of those opportunities are like? Sure, obviously we want people to get as broad a, an experiential background as possible. So in addition to the graduate assistantship, uh, the master's program requires six hours or um, credit hours, but a 200 hours of internship where you will learn about something other than your graduate assistantship. So if you have a housing graduate assistantship, you might do an internship in uh, the, the uh, student discipline office, or you might do an internship in the counseling center. Uh, just to give a broader experience uh, to the student. Typically, these are uh, without pay, um, but it's um, it, the payoff comes because you get to add it to your resume. Now, there are some internships that students will do in the summertime uh, where th there will be pay. Occasionally, those are on campus, but uh, frequently, we have students going to other campuses for the summer. Uh, we've had graduate students go to Cornell, uh, to go to Missouri State, uh, to go to the University of Texas and do internships that were actually paid internships uh, during the summer, but they count for academic credit at TCU. Great. Thank you so much. Um, one other piece that we've sort of added in addition to some of the assistantship offerings and some of the internship offerings is creating a more cohort-like feel within our program um, and more of uh, support in graduate students' transition 
to TCU and transition to graduate student life. Um, and so we've created something called the GATE program. Um, it stands for Graduate Assistant Transition Experience. Uh, and so Stanley's gonna talk to us a little bit about his experience within the GATE program. Yeah, so uh, when I first heard about the GATE program, I had no idea what it was. Um, I was literally thinking of an actual GATE and I didn't know that it was like an acronym for something. And so, <laughs> As Tim said, it's a graduate assistant transition experience. And in that title alone, it like explains exactly what the program is. And so um, we meet uh, once a month and we cover a specific topic during that time. Um, overall, the topics are career professional development, um, exploring our profession, um, and social and local opportunities. And so what I mean by that is uh, for our first GATE session that we went to, we took a Myers-Briggs assessment and we really went into that for a while. And we also got to meet uh, different people that, uh, different faculty that work in different departments uh, of TCU. Um, the second was um, exploring internships, um, exploring an opportunity to also make our resume look a little bit better. Um, and so with the GATE program, it gives you an opportunity to not just um, stay like stagnant with your work and not just stay stagnant with your assistantship, but also like how to improve as a professional in all of these different areas. And so um, it's definitely helped me out for sure um, with the internship process going on for the summer. Um, and it's definitely helped me out with all the thing, all the little things. And so etiquette, um, what to have in your office, what to wear, um, things that some people necessarily sometimes feel uncomfortable about asking those questions. Gate gives an opportunity for all those questions to be answered. Um, and yeah. Thanks, Stanley. I think that it's our desire at TCU to fill in all of your developmental gaps as you transition from student and undergraduate life to professional life. And so the GATE program has really helped us develop in some areas that don't, don't always get covered as consistently in the classroom. Uh, Brooke and Zach, could you all maybe speak to your favorite part of the GATE program thus far this year? <laughs> um, I think one of my favorite parts was doing, um, having our time with like the career center and having our resumes getting looked at and um, just spending a lot of time thinking and talking about how we need to tailor those things um, to certain jobs. And so just giving to getting tips and tricks like that for our job search, because it's crazy how quickly it, it comes up. And so having that network and support while you're job searching is really huge. I would kind of echo that in the sense of Right now we're kind of in the thick and Dr. Mills kind of talked about it with summer internships. They really helped us understand here are the professional organizations out there and then here are the two kind of or two of the many portals you can go through to find a summer assistantship internship. And so being able to have that advice and understanding of how these systems work helped out, but also just the social side of it and saying that like this, it gets us with other people that other GAs that we don't necessarily always see. And so I have an opportunity to meet with them and then also go out and do like a happy hour and really have that time to bond and grow with each other to where when we see each other, not only just in gate or sometimes in class, we can have this time and really grow in those relationships. And so I think it really is doing its part and making sure that this program feels very collaborative and also as a cohort model. Thanks, y'all, for sharing that. Y'all also make that program really great. <coughs> um, so now we're going to move into talking a little bit about the academic side of the program. So we are going to let Dr. Mills give us a fun overview of the program and some of the highlights. I, I will I will be uh, uh, fairly quick on this, but I think it's important to know two things about our program. One, it is not a cohort program. That is, you don't necessarily all take classes together in lockstep, although you do take most of your classes together. The second thing is that because we are a relatively small school and a small program, we can be very flexible. So if you have a particular uh, professional interest, uh, we can help design the program uh, to lead you on the path towards that uh, towards achieving your professional goals. And I think that flexibility um, makes TCU a little bit unique. 
We also try very hard to give students an opportunity to uh, spend a little bit of time overseas. Uh, Brooke, for example, has uh, been in our program in the United Kingdom and Ireland uh, and Scotland, where we try to understand how other people conduct higher education, which should help us better understand our own system of higher education. So every student will have an opportunity uh, to participate in an overseas uh, program while they're uh, at TCU. Um, finally, I, I think it's important to know that the faculty um, want to work with uh, students, uh, whether it's presenting at a regional or a national conference or writing a paper. Um, faculty are very accessible in the program and you will have an opportunity to have classes with uh, a number of the uh, pro program faculty in, in uh, higher education. And I think the faculty are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they definitely are. Um, well, talking a little bit more specifically towards the courses and some of the homework, um, what does that look like for a graduate student, Stanley? Yeah, so if you like taking tests, um, I would say that this is probably not the, you know, uh, degree or place to take this at because, like, we don't take a lot of tests. I mean, I sure haven't so far, so it's been nice. Um, and uh, Dr. Mills can also attest for this, but we are a firm believer in peer-to-peer -peer learning and, like, being able to, like, present to one another about material that we learn in the class and material that really is important to us. And so... Um, that's just been incredible, being able to talk about things that like Im immediately impact our lives or it has impacted our lives. And so that's been really great too. And, and also like what we learn in class also helps us apply it to our actual G uh, graduate assistantship, but it also helps it apply to our profession, um, wh whatever we're doing uh, afterwards. And so um, and there's a lot of discussions in class. Uh, there's a lot of times uh, where we just talk about what's going on um, in the world, like events and articles we look at. Um, and so these are all things that I've appreciated. Homework, I will say, there is a lot of reading. Um, you didn't hear this from me, but if you can skim pretty well, you're, you're going to be good. Nothing else might you know, attest for that too, but if you're able to skim pretty quickly and just retain uh, some of good parts that really uh, appreciate that you appreciate, uh, you'll be good. Um, but there isn't any crazy homework. Um, you get out what you input into all of the classes. Stanley, I'm a little nervous for you. Are you taking a class with Dr. Mills this semester? <laughs> Not this semester. I think this is the only semester where I don't have to take one from him. Um, but I know in my, the rest of my semesters, I will have to take a class from him, but hopefully he will forget this by then. So. <laughs> well, there might be a quiz in your future. So Dr. Mills talked a little bit about how creative and flexible the program is. Um, Zach, could you talk a little bit about how you've sort of tried to create your own adventure here at TCU academically? Yeah, so what's really great is they really kind of mold and like, they understand the faculty here know kind of what your goals are post your degree. And so being able to kind of pick your courses based off of that has been really helpful. And so with that, you have to take like the required ones, both your electives. It's been really nice to kind of focus on and having the faculty and staff here. Um, they're actually really incredible. Um, Cause like Stanley talked about, there's a lot of reading involved, but the thing that I liked best um, in my semester and like, a few weeks of time here in class is that they really challenge you to go with that. And so knowing as you pick your courses, they're not gonna be easy ones. Like they're gonna challenge you, but they're also gonna be really supportive of you. And so with that, uh, looking at creating my own adventure, it's also they've been flexible in the meaning of, I like Dr. Mills talked about how Brooke went on the London UK trip. Like I'm going on that this May, uh, same with Stanley. And so they've been flexible in saying, here's how we're gonna map out your two years here and how we're gonna do it academically. And so it's been really great having such a flexibility in our um, two years, the class schedules and things like that. And so that's been a really 
kind of a big blessing to have and not and knowing that while there is structure to this program they're not stuck in it and they're willing to work with you and help make sure that the classes you're selecting are the classes that you need in order to meet the goals that you've set for yourselves in grad school. Awesome. So Brooke, we've mentioned a couple of times this abroad opportunity that you went on. Can you speak to that for just a second and like how that's impacted your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the abroad trip um, with Dr. Mills was definitely one of my favorite parts um, of doing this program. Um, not only did we get like the enrichment of the education of like truly understanding how they run things differently in the UK, but also just like really getting to know the people in your program on a deeper level. I think there's something to be said about traveling with a group of um, 10 people for 10 days and um, just like having that bond. So I think like just creating relationships and networking and um, I think it's really special too. Like we got to go with Dr. Mills, like the head of our program and he knows all kinds of things. And um, <laughs> like that is, that is something that's really cool. I felt like we are we're able to develop um, a deeper relationship and knowledge for each other. And so that was really special. And um, just like getting to see all these beautiful universities um, and how they're run so differently than ours um, was a, was a wonderful opportunity. Thanks, Brooke. So the last thing we wanted to mention regarding academics uh, before we move on to another topic, uh, we'd be remiss without mentioning Dr. Mills and the rest of the faculty's network um, and how that can kind of impact you as you go through both your time as a graduate student, but also in your first professional job search. So Dr. Mills, can you talk a little bit about that? I can. I, I think um, the faculty is uh, full of scholars. Uh, people who have spent their life being scholars, but we also have a lot of people who have uh, been practitioners before they became uh, faculty members. So on the faculty is a person who was a former college president. Uh, I was a former college vice president. Uh, we have uh, people who have worked in a variety of positions in schools, uh, both public schools and private schools. So I think this mix of faculty between practitioners and scholars is, is really helpful. Uh, and I want to second what Stanley said. Um, as faculty, we do not lecture. Uh, we don't believe in lectures as an effective form of communicating knowledge. Um, that doesn't mean we won't have a 10 or 15 minute speech, but typically we don't um, lecture, but we do uh, try to challenge students uh, to learn both from each other and from the materials. And in some ways, faculty are moderators, prodders, um, challengers, uh, so that the learning is a little bit deeper than might otherwise be. Um, and finally, I do want to say that faculty are very connected to national associations. Uh, so we are able to connect students with people we know at other institutions. Uh, we want we encourage students to be involved in case study competitions. We encourage students, as I said earlier, to uh, write papers, make presentations, um, and begin their professional association career while they're a graduate student. Great. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Um, so our next topic is going to be the application process. And we hope to just provide some insight for you all as you are experiencing um, what it's like to apply to grad schools um, and hopefully make your TCU experience a really good one. So Jen, could you speak to the SPE and OPE process really quick? And maybe what are some other alternatives if you aren't attending either one of those? Yes, so we will be attending SPE and OPE as well um, to, um, if you're interested in our program to apply for that, um, we highly encourage you to. Um, so just reach out to us. Um, our contact is on all both of those websites as well. So reach out to us and we're happy to set up an interview with you um, at both of those locations. If you're interested in that too, and you're in this SPE area, um, which is a Southern Placement Exchange area, it's in taking place in Denton, Texas this year. Um, we're involved in that. They're currently giving away a free um, 
membership, um, they're waiving that admission cost or membership cost um, to get into the program. So get into the space. If you're interested in that, you can do that. So if that's an interest of yours, uh, you just have to like tag some people on their Instagram. So follow them at Southern Placement Exchange um, on there. But if you're not going to SPE or if you're not going to OPE, still reach out to us. We'll be sending our information um, here after this as well. So reach out to any one of us. We're happy to get you connected to what we need uh, to get you an interview here as well. So don't think that just because you're not going to one of those locations that we can't get you in. We're happy to set up some Skype interviews um, with that um, and get you all the information that you may need if you're interested in working here, which we would love for you to be interested in. Um, part of that obviously means you have to get into the College of Education as well. So um, applying to the College of Ed and to our program is going to be key because we need to make sure you get admitted there before we can hire you and get you an assistantship as well. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us at any point in time. Um, we kind of have like a rolling admittance as far as um, timeline goes. We're not on a super strict timeline, except for Dr. Mills is at March 15th. March 1st. Okay, March 1st to apply to the program. So before then, um, so we can get you in and get you all settled and we'd love to do that, so. Great. Okay. Let me just say, we will make decisions before March 1st. Uh, beginning this month, we uh, sort of have a rolling admission through uh, February. So the sooner that one applies, the, the better. And it will also uh, give you a greater understanding of the uh, graduate assistantship opportunities that are available. Uh, Tim's going to talk about that um, in, in a little bit. Um, let me say something about the application. Um, do not um, think that's a throwaway application. We look very carefully at it. We ask you to write a resume. I mean, write an essay uh, in addition to your resume. We read that essay carefully, both to try to understand your motivation as a student and to see how well you write. Um, so. Just be thoughtful when you when you write your essay. Um, we we lean heavily on your recommendations. So again, be be thoughtful about who you get to make a recommendation. Remember, this is a recommendation both for graduate school and for graduate assistantship. So you might want to have someone who can speak to your academic ability and a different person who can speak to your uh, work abilities, um, but you don't want just academics or just somebody who knows uh, your work. Uh, finally, there's always the question about the GRE. Um, I don't, I thought everybody just enjoyed taking the GRE. <laughs> so, <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Um, the, we are mostly interested in your writing uh, score, the analytical writing score. Um, after that, we're interested in the verbal and, the, and then finally the math. If you have over a 3.0 as an undergraduate, um, we look at the GRE much less. If you're below a 3.0 undergraduate GPA, then the GRE uh, becomes a very important uh, part of your application. Um, so we're mostly looking at your undergraduate grades, your recommendations, um, your involvement as an undergraduate, and your essay. Great. So one of the things that I wanted to offer up to you all as an opportunity is a chance to visit us. Um, and visiting would include much more of us kind of showing you TCU than it would be full-scale, uh, intimidating interview process. Um, and so we have on our website, we have a link that um, you can take a quick survey on uh, coming for a visit day. And so those visit days, uh, a meeting with Dr. Mills, meeting with some of the graduate students, um, a tour of campus, and then a whole host of kind of flexible options as you see fit. So if you're really interested in seeing the city and the city is really important to you, we can take you on a tour. If you wanna uh, get to know some students, we can try and arrange that for you. But we have uh, this survey out so that we can sort of customize a visit day that's best 
um, for you and giving you the answers that you want about TCU. And so um, that is up on our website and that can also be accessed if you email us um, and we will uh, send that right out to you and try and find a way to get you to Fort Worth so that we can show you what being a horn frog is all about. So lastly, we're just gonna quickly let everyone give their like quick snippet best advice for this application process um, and specifically to the process at TCU. So we'll start with Zach and Brooke. Go for it. Perfect. Um, I would say just trust the process of, of applications and interviewing. Um, I know it can be really stressful, but be yourself and be honest about what you want um, out of your GA position, what you want out of your program, um, and then figure out if the people that are around you are people that you're willing to spend all your time with and be, be very um, close to. And so just, just trusting that and being your authentic, genuine self. I think absolutely yes. I also, word of caution, is I was a person who was working as a consultant, so I was already in the higher ed world before coming to grad school. And so I got connected on a bunch of Facebook groups for a lot of like future student, student affairs professionals. And to anyone going through the process, my advice would just kind of be careful of uh, falling in the trap of when people start posting, uh, who else got accepted, who else did this, and like you haven't necessarily heard back from anyone yet, don't freak out. Like you've got to trust the process. For me, I really enjoyed having the conversations with all of my like now supervisors, as well as Dr. Mills prior to everything, because that gave me a really good kind of insight of exactly who I'd be working for and what it would look like. And so I think definitely take advantage of every opportunity you have um, with the programs that we offer for the application process, such as like the visit days that Tim talked about. Um, but in the end, like choosing TCU is the best decision that I've made. And I think Brooke could probably agree. Um, and so we would love to absolutely like have y'all here. Thank you guys. Stanley, can you give us your best advice? Yeah, uh, just a little bit of, um, so like last year at this time, I didn't even know what TCU was. And I didn't even know that like they had a program or anything like that. And what I mean by that is you're really not gonna know like, you know, maybe some people do know where you want to go, but I, I didn't. I didn't even really know what this process was. I didn't know student affairs was even a career. Um, and so uh, moving forward, the only thing that I have to say uh, is really what Brooke had said, and it's really just being yourself. Uh, be who you are and be the that's, – that's the best that you can be is being yourself. Um, you don't have to put up a front to any of the universities that you can talk to. You don't have to act like you're somebody you're not. Um, there's going to be a perfect university for you. Um, and if this webinar doesn't like encourage you to apply to TCU or anything like that, that is okay. It's not going to hurt our feelings. This is just an opportunity for you to know what we're about um, and that we are all very personable and we would love, love, love for you to come here. Um, and we would love to interview with you and we would love to just talk to you. Thanks, Stanley. Jen, can you give us your best piece of advice? Yeah, I think just remembering that um, graduate school is about learning. And so um, ensuring that you're taking that serious of what your academics look like, um, because it is a crucial part of why you're coming to get that degree. But I think the other part of your learning is what Dr. Mills talked about earlier of like the experiences that you get outside of the classroom. Um, how are you relating what you're learning in the classroom to the outside piece of the classroom? Um, there's just such valuable knowledge there and that making that connection is so important. Um, we all know that we're not gonna talk to a student and tell them like, hey student, you're in this vector of Chickering's theory. Um, like that's not how we talk to students, right? That's not how we develop students in those ways. Um, so it's important to know how to transfer what you're learning in those theories that you're learning in the classroom into practice. And so going to a, a university that's right for you, that's the best fit for you, but that gives you an opportunity to really practice those um, things that you're learning in different areas. So you have an opportunity to build that skill set to allow tools in your tool belt. So when you do apply for that first job, 
you have knowledge and a breadth of knowledge of a wide variety of things that you can speak to. So um, those transferable skills that you get to build um, during this time is really crucial for you. Um, but it's also a time to dip your hand in a lot of different things. Don't pigeonhole yourself into one area, um, experience a lot. And so take advantage of those opportunities that you have. So be thinking about that um, as you kind of, I think, as you um, search for grad schools, it's essentially you, just as much your choice as it is the other university's choice. And so making sure that you're thinking of like what that looks like for your future. So that way you're not pigeonholing yourself into just one set career, but you get a breadth of knowledge to really decide what you like best. Thank you. All right, Dr. Mills, take us out on advice with something really magical. <laughs> There's a little bit of pressure. <laughs> I want you to I want to encourage you to be thoughtful about the process. Um, while we think TCU is a great place, it's not the place for everybody. So uh, think about where you can grow best, where you can uh, not just survive but thrive for the next couple of years. Uh, at some point, after a couple of years of school, you're going to want to uh, be employed. Um, and so you need to be sure that the experience that you have as a graduate student and a graduate assistant will uh, stand you in good stead so that you can go out and have your choice of, of jobs. I, I told Brooke earlier today that one of our graduates from December uh, told us that she had just gotten her first full-time job um, at a, a major university in the Midwest. And we're so proud of her, but that's uh, what we want to have happen, that when you finish here, or for you, when you finish wherever you go, that you are ready to start your professional career and to make the kind of impact on young women and men uh, that makes higher education the important institution that it is. That was good. That was magical. You did well. <laughs> Awesome. So we are going to have uh, contact information for everyone that is on this call in the uh, caption of the video. And so if you look below, you should be able to find names and emails for everyone that is on this Hangout. And uh, I didn't actually ask them this beforehand because I was so sure that every single one of them, it would be happy to talk with you and happy to correspond with you if you reach out to them. Um, and so their emails are below. So feel free to shoot anyone an, uh, an email if you want to know more about something they talked about or just want to hear more about our experiences. Um, so at the end of the day, we just hope that you kind of follow our campaign and take the lead on your future um, and can come check out TCU and hopefully become a graduate student here. Um, so we would love to see you here and love to talk to you soon. And we hope that this was uh, a fun, informed way to spend a couple hours. Thank you. And go Frogs! Go, go Frogs! frogs. <laughs>